Hello, folks. Uh, welcome to this webinar by Product School. Uh, today, I'm uh, Ankit Shravaswa. I'll be walking you through uh, some interviewing tips uh, and how do you interview for a product role. Uh, so I'll be walking you through different sort of interview questions that you can expect uh, in your product interviews and hopefully help you land la help you land that product job. So just a quick overview of myself. I'm Ankit. Um, I'm a product lead manager at DocuSign. I've been in the product world for over about a decade now. Uh, so I've done quite a few interviews. I have interviewed myself. Uh, I have interviewed people for positions. I've interviewed managers for positions. Um, so I think Today, I'm going to be sharing all my knowledge, and I'm super happy to do that on how do you interview and how do you specifically interview uh, for questions in the product sense world or, or, or questions which are of product sense type and questions which are of product execution type. Um, so today's agenda will all be about giving you sort of a quick overview about interviewing and then digging into a framework um, framework specifically centered around um you know how do you answer that product sense question uh and then you know digging in deep into that framework as well as ending with uh certain certain pointers that you can use to ace um that product sense question and similarly i'll be doing the same for product execution questions as well um so let's not waste any time let's uh, get right into it um and before I do so, I sort of wanted to sort of bring this slide back in, which I'd used in my last um, webinar. So I'm going to be um, uh, I'm going to be making sure that all of these frameworks that I give out um, have certain numbers on top. So if you go through these slides again, they'll have certain numbers on on right hand side. So I've sort of made sure that these frameworks, um, you know an APM or a junior PM that is interviewing for a junior product role can also use. And the expectations over there are much less as compared to the expectations that we've set and the bar that we've set for you know, directors or product lead managers. So while you're interviewing for these questions, um, I've, I've, write, I've given you certain hints that if you're a leader, you should be surfacing up and you, showing, you should be showing expertise in, uh, and that would really make you you know shine up and make you shine out loud <laughs> and that would differentiate you from all of the other candidates out there so um yeah so if you in the next few slides you'll see these numbers one two three four on top and one would be for an apm and that framework would apply for an apm and similarly four would be for a product director or a product lead manager uh or managers or, or a manager of product managers uh and the expectations over there would be, you know, set for them. So, uh, and again, if you missed my last webinar, please do catch up on that. It's pretty important and super helpful for how do you, you know, uh, how do you, you uh, how do you get into the product management role and what strategies should you, sh you should you be using? So, okay, now let's get back into the topic at hand and let's start off with um, how do you interview or answer product sense questions. Um, so let's let's give you a little bit more context and background. So as a product manager, you will potentially own and manage global scale products. So your job is to think outside the box, to be innovative, to articulate thoughts and articulate them in a manner that, that can be easily be broken down into understandable chunks by you know, leaders as well as um, engineers. Um, so this skill is tested by using a product sense interview question. Um, so what, what we are going to be, what, what we as testers of a product sense interview um, expect you to articulate an ambiguous problem, expect you to break down problems uh, into certain manageable or readable chunks. And then, you know, obviously we expect you to place yourself in customer shoes and understand what are the pain points that customers are experiencing. Uh, once you have all of that, we also want you to prioritize each step. So prioritize each solution that you get. Uh, now, essentially, you know, as a product manager, you're gonna be 
hearing a lot of different perspectives, perspectives and, you know, requirements would always flow in. And it's your job to not just hear all of these perspectives, but sort of arrange and prioritize uh, where should you be investing for our highest ROI. So it's your job to hear a lot of perspectives, but it's also your job to prioritize them. Uh, and this question tests your ability, tests your abilities to prioritize. Um, so let's let's take an example. Um, let's say I give you a question to design a note-taking application for students. Um, and typically these questions come with a time period of like 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, depending upon interviews or sometimes even 60 minutes, um, where you have about 60 minutes to sort of walk through this entire framework. Now, it really depends. I would say if the interview is for 60 minutes, you probably get 50 minutes and 10 minutes for asking more questions. Uh, so do be mindful of that. Uh, if obviously the interview is only 45 minutes, then make sure you're you're very crisp and clear of about all of your answers and you're walking through the framework. Um, but at the same point of time, uh, when you answer these questions, at no point of time should it, it be so, uh, uh, you know, it should not look like you have a framework in your mind and you only want to stick to that, this specific framework. Uh, you should think about all of these bullet points while you're walking through a solution, but at no point of time should it look framed. Um, so going back to the question, let's design a note-taking application for students. Now, now remember, um, you know, I have one and two numbers over here, which means going back, um, I would expect senior product managers all, all the way from APMs to senior product managers to at least bare minimum have this framework or this thought process going on in their head while they're answering this question, this product sense question. So first of all, um, you will come in and you would identify different customer segments. So if let's say we're talking about a note-taking application uh, for students, you must think about the word students and you must think about, hey, how can I categorize and segment out students? Would it be by age, um, you know, different age groups, or should I be thinking about different school types? So should these segments be middle school children all clubbed together? Should it be high school children all clubbed up, clubbed up together? Should it be university st students? Um, so you must think about students and the different segments that are applicable for the category of students. Um, and then obviously, once you have a category, once you have all these categories, uh, you would probably need to prioritize one of these categories. Now, again, priority should be based upon impact, reach. You could pick any parameter on which you're picking this segment, but you must articulate and clearly explain why are you picking one segment over other. Um, once you have that segment picked, uh, you need to walk through different pain points. So let's say we, we categorize and segmented it out the question according to age groups, and we wanna pick the age group of K-12 students, uh, and now you must put yourself in the shoes of a K-12 student uh, and sort of walk through uh, what, you know, what pain points would a K-12 student face while taking notes. Uh, so if you're in a math class, what kind of notes would you want to take? If you're in a science class, what kind of a note would you want to take? Is the pain point that when I'm in a different class, I want to take different types of notes? or the pain point that I keep losing my notes, it's not easy to organize them, and I am always really bad at organizing my notes. Um, so really think through the problem, really think through the pain point uh, that that customer segment group is facing and put yourself in their shoes and imagine you facing those problems um, in, you know, in real life. Then, once you have that problem visualized, once you've thought visually what those pain points were, uh, you might want to propose certain solutions. Now, obviously, uh, you know, out of the four, I would suggest only uh, I would only suggest doing about four to five pain points. You would probably not have more time than that. Uh, prioritize one pain point and then jump into solutions. So let's say for this question, um, my pain point is organization. And as a as a K-12 student, I'm not able to organize my uh, my 
uh, my notes. I pick that specific pain point and I articulate again that for greatest reach across all of these segments, um, I think for, for, for greatest reach and impact, I would want to pick this specific pain point. Uh, once you have that pain point, propose a few solutions. So again, maximum of three to four solutions is good enough. Uh, I would not go more than that. Uh, I think propose all of the solutions, uh, identify, you know, why, what, what sort of impact would each solution have, uh, and then quickly walk through uh, the design of the solution. So, um, and when I say quickly, I mean, pause, think through the design that you'd have in mind. Always remember to take breath, always remember to pause, do not overspeak. I think it's better to pause and think through your answers rather than just, you know, rumbling out your your thought process. Of course, it's important to tell your interviewer what you're thinking, but it's always okay to pause for a few minutes, think through the design of your solution, and walk through the design of your solution uh, once you have clarity. Um, so, just pro tips: I usually have a pen and paper in hand. Um, when I have my solutions written down, I sort of walk through a priority of why I think one of these solutions would have greatest impact. And then I start just drawing different UX, small UX boxes, sometimes on that piece of paper. Uh, if it's in a room, I start using a whiteboard to sort of show them the experience. Um, and once I have clarity on all different spec uh, on all different steps of this experience, I propose different success metrics. Uh, now, there's also one more thing that, that I'm going to talk in the next slide about, and that would tailor and channel into the type of success metrics you propose. Um, so let's jump into, let's say you're a lead manager. What are certain important things that, you know, apart from the one, uh, apart from the four different things that I talked about are also important. So even before you begin this question, I think two important things to set uh to set the right pace is get clarity <laughs> what do we mean by students in this question uh do we have certain markets that you want to stick to do you want this question to be only limited to us north america do you also want to think about other continents uh do you want me to only think about you know technology related solutions again no taking could be physical uh so are we only talking about proposing certain solutions in the tech world um so get those clarities ask those questions interviewers generally uh you know are very open to answering any sort of clarifying questions um set the goal uh now this is is pretty interesting and goal is a word that I'm using. Um, you know, I, I know Facebook uses this very often, but now it's very industry standard and on what is your intention in terms of um, what, what goals do you want to set for this solution and what goals do you want to set for this product? And by goals, I mean like, hey, as a product, uh, should this be driving engagement for your product? Um, should this be driving growth? Uh, are there any top level, you know, um, company missions and statements that we should be taking into account? Uh, setting that goal and intention before beforehand really helps. And if there is no goal and intention, you can also talk about, you know, you can set a goal and intention by yourself. So have that conversation with the interviewer, maybe set a goal according to market needs and market, uh, you know, the five C's. So as in what is the customer, what is the market? So in this case, you know, the question was about note taking. So know your competitors, which is Evernote, uh, know your market segment. And uh, if you're talking about, let's say, if you're developing a note taking app for, let's say, Microsoft, uh, over there, note taking is a free application. So you should sort of know about these these small things. Uh, and therefore, the goal usually is to drive engagement and drive more users into the funnel. So it's a top funnel product at the end of the day. So driving more growth and driving more users uh, and setting that goal um, is what you should be doing. And then you should be walking through the intentions of you know, setting a customer segmentation, pain points, proposing solutions, and then design. Um, now, connecting this back to the earlier slide that I was talking about, um, 
talking about a design or showing a user experience is great. Uh, but I think what interviewers really like is how would you measure success about success of this product? So certain metrics throughout the design, so whether it's CTR or whether it is you know click through rates or whether it's CSAT, uh, I think proposing those top top level metrics uh, as success metrics is also important. Um, some people forget about doing this and then think it's it's only part of the product execution exercise. Uh, but I think if you want to stand out, um, if you want to go above and beyond, that is something you should definitely do. <laughs> um, similarly, now let's talk about how do you go above and beyond? How do you go uh, beyond the realms of standard frameworks, beyond the realms of just being an APM? And um, you know, how do you go answer the same question uh, from a perspective of, pro of a product leader and a director. I think what really sets apart a leader is their know-how and understanding of the market. Um, so if it's a note-taking market or if it's, uh, in, in our previous question, it was all about note-taking and it was about arranging thoughts uh, in, in a cohesive manner. Um, I think that market segment, if you understand that market, if you understand the customers, if you understand whether this is a two-sided or three-sided marketplace. So, you know, those are super important and play a critical role in showing your know-hows and your understanding of these different segments. Um, additionally, I think, um, you know, apart from addressable market and apart from knowing market know-hows, uh, if you are able to show clearly um, that you're prioritizing based upon reach, impact, or effort, or you know some other reasoning behind your priority, I think it clearly shows that you are a great leader. So keep those two things and two hints in mind. I think those are super important, and they will help you uh, make sure that you are standing out in your interviews. Okay, so let's pause here a little bit. Also, do remember to shoot me any questions if you have. Feel free to send me messages on LinkedIn. I will certainly love to answer them. So um, let's change gears a little bit. Um, let's talk about product execution. Um, what is product execution? Product execution is Another question that you know that will be thrown in your way while you're interviewing as a product manager, and what it'll really try to do is measure and identify if you can, um, you know, a set goals for your product. Um, whether these are goals that are aligned towards your mission and Uber strategy are important, and you know, taking and whether or not you can take these goals and suggest, uh, suggest and define success metrics is the second most important thing about this question. So setting goals and then setting success metrics. Um, and by success metrics, we also mean, uh, you know, not start metrics related to, uh, you know, all of the metrics that you've set. So three important things. Uh, and then fourth, usually a subpart or sometimes even, you know, a separate interview in certain cases tries to test you on your abilities to debug issues so this is super important uh sometimes as product managers we will you know we will have occurrences where we need to either validate our hypothesis or need to dig dig down deep into some you know root causes and understand what went wrong and you know really look through different metrics to understand what caused an issue um the latter part of this this interview targets um you know our abilities to debug issues targets and targets to targets our skill sets and understands if we have those skills or not to debug issues um and i think that's that's super important i think that's really what being a product manager is all about uh knowing quickly where are the problems knowing quickly how can we solve them and knowing quickly what is going wrong will set you apart so let's let's dive in into a product execution framework. Um, so here's a quick question. Um, how would you measure success for Facebook Marketplace? 
Now, of course, marketplaces, usually e-commerce marketplaces are two-sided. Uh, so, you know, there's a buyer and then there's a seller. So um, almost all of these business types where, you know, it, all of these e-commerce business types would have certain, you know, top level metrics that are, um, that, you know, that would be available for, you know, all e-commerce businesses. So um, having a little bit of uh, knowledge of different business types is super helpful. Um, and I think, if you read through um, certain books, so obviously decoding PM interviews is probably the top big seller out there. You will you will have certain you know different business types uh, that, that certain business types that be sort of surfaced up in these books. So e-commerce uh, platforms or e-commerce websites, um, then you know mobile applications, what should you be measuring for mobile apps? To have certain metrics for each of these categories, do take a look. I would highly suggest that you know you have certain uh certain understanding of these metrics for sure. Um, but getting back to the question, uh how do I what what do I ask? How do I sort of tackle this question? First, obviously ask those clarifying questions, ask whether uh this question is limited to a certain scope, to a certain region, to a certain market. Uh, and then I think most people forget doing this, but this is key to acing the product execution interview. Walk through the user experience. So if it's Facebook Marketplace or you know any other product out there, ask just just you know ask them if user comes in, what do they click on, or just walk through an experience of okay, I'm I'm as a Facebook mar Facebook Facebook Marketplace user, what what do I do? I take my phone, I take certain pictures. Um, of a product that I want to sell, I create a listing quickly. I, I I add, you know, where am I located? If this item is for pickup only or for delivery as well, uh, I post this posting and then I get messages. I reply to them, uh, and then you know I set up a place to meet, uh, and then I show this product that I want to sell. Or sometimes I just video call and show this product, and then I sell this product and collect money for what product I'm selling. So this end-to-end -end experience is super important. And you know, when you do this, two things happen. One, uh, first of all, you know you and your interviewer are on the same page about the product. Sometimes you might not even know the product. So once when you do this experience, uh, the interviewer can openly guide you on what is the product and what is the experience, what is the user ex associated user experience. And then at the same point of time, you know, it gives you clarity in your mind on what are the different steps that need to be measured for this product to be successful. So remember, you've done goal setting by now. You've set this goal of like, hey, um, this product is, you know, you've already thought through the mission statement of Facebook. You've already thought through uh, what, what Facebook is for um, and what goals are you thriving to achieve? So if you're thriving to achieve engagement, uh, you walk through the user experience, you know what the user experience is like, and now you must propose success metrics tailored towards the goal of driving higher user engagement. Um, and sorry, before you do and propose these, uh, before you go ahead and propose these metrics, you must make sure you dive through different customer segments. So I sort of walked through that earlier where I said two-sided marketplace, um, you know, there's a buyer and there's a seller. Uh, and you want to make sure you're prioritizing one. So um, obviously, if, if there are no sellers, there wouldn't be any buyers. So you, in two-sided marketplaces, you want to make sure that there are enough sellers and the mar marketplace is enough products before you, know, you start surfacing it to buyers. So most likely, you will prioritize the buyer side, and then you would go and propose certain metrics to measure uh, you know, the number of buyers and the number of listings out there. Um, and remember metrics, and this is the best tip I can give you, metrics should be actionable, measurable, and not gameable. Uh, what that means is, you know, people sort of propose random metrics, but I think A, you should be, you should make sure that they're actionable. And so they should have numerator and denominators, and they should be over a certain period of time. So, you know, have the component of days, months, or years associated with them. So they, they should be measurable, they should be actionable, uh, and then non-gameable. So I think what, what that means is like, um, hey, I cannot just 
you know, uh, have certain metrics which uh, are bloated and, you know, which others can gamify. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that subject a little bit more in the next slide. So just pause there for a second, um, but I'll come back to it. Don't worry. In the end, I think what we're looking for is, uh, you know, you prioritizing one important metric, calling it North Star metric. And you do so by walking through each metric and talking about pros and cons about each metric until you realize which one stands out and which one is the North Star metric. Um, after you've done done that, you summarize, you, you know, you talk about, you know, you, yeah, you, you, you give your closing comments, you talk about this one simple not metric that you proposed. Um, here's some additions to how, how are the other things that, or what other things you would add. So remember, I was talking about, um, you know, gamifying and what, what I would also expect from different uh, product leaders and managers is when they talk about success metrics, they should also talk about counter metrics. So let's say if the goal is growth, uh, you should also talk about how uh, your spendings in bringing more and more buyers uh, would be impactful or in bottom line because you're going to be spending a lot to market out and get more buyers in or partnering with different buyers and different, let, you know, different sort of um, sellers out there, which would impact your bottom line. So your growth projections would be, uh, your user growth projections would be high, but your revenue growth projections or your bottom line projections might not be that high. Um, so I think counter metrics and talking about counter metrics, uh, what impact can your not, met, not star metric have on other metrics? Is also important, and that's what you that that's what makes you a leader. That that makes us understand as interviewers that you're not just thinking about your product, but you're also thinking about other products out there that you can either cannibalize or have an impact, or or have either a positive ne negative impact on uh, knowingly. Uh, so that sort of strategy and that sort of thought process is super important um, and makes you stand out. So I'm going to pause here. Um, sorry, I'm actually not going to pause here. Um, again, I think I'll, I'll walk through debugging and then I'll pause. And if you have, again, and if you have any questions about execution or debugging, feel free to shoot me a message on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, let's jump into product execution and the debugging aspect of this. Uh, this is very interesting. I think over the last couple of years, we've most product execution questions have added this subpart to it, um, where after you've proposed your success metrics, we try to understand, try to gamify a little bit, and we try to understand, um, I mean, when I say gamify, I mean like make the interview more more gameable. And we try to ask this question where like, hey, imagine you're having a spike in you know, um, your monthly active users. Uh, in your mail, and that's it's a downward spike, and most of our customers are not there. What do we investigate, and how do we investigate what this spike or drop was about? Um, and then investigation is actually very, uh, I would say, it's a step process. You can walk through certain steps, but never make it look like you're walking through steps. Um, Always make it look like that you're thinking through each of these categories, each of these steps in real time, and actually understanding um, the problem at hand. So when you start investigating, investigate, you know, investigation could be regional, seasonal, gradual. So your 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 uh, drop or your spike could be due to either of these reasons, and then sort of make a tree structure in your head where you're going. Okay, if it was seasonal, what could it be? If it was regional, what it could be. But if it was gradual, what are the different areas that I should be thinking about? Um, and then, you know, most of these categories, I've tried to club them up into certain categories that I generally think about. Uh, and let's walk through them. So I think it could be sort of physical world. So people who are using the 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 product, let's say you're in North America, there are certain reasons why this app was not working in North America. We had a localization issue. We we sort of 
and just released and fixed a new bug and that caused like problems with this app in North America. So it could be physical world or, or specific to a region. Um, it could be user specific, so it could be broken experiences. So some experiences for our user were broken, which is why we saw this spike. Or, you know, this is a very interesting one, competitive issues. So our competitor launched something and, you know, it's a new product, which is why uh, our current user base walked over to this newer product. Um, and or, you know, marketing is making some rollouts, which is causing either gain or loss users. And then finally, you should always talk about this, which is internal product issues causing spikes. So uh, maybe there was another uh, feature that was launched and that cannibalized my current feature and which is why my product is not doing as well as it's supposed to do. So walk through each categories, walk through different reasons. Again, make sure it's a conversation between you and the interviewer rather than you just walking through these random categories and just making them, you know, um, making them think that you've just learned these in the back of your mind. Um, yeah, so do that. I think that should be about it. I think these are big hints and big uh, sort of solutions that I've given you. Um, Obviously, I, I published a list of books and articles that you should be reading. Um, you should also try, uh, you know, this platform known as Exponent. I try Exponent. I really like it. Uh, I think it has these list of interview questions that you can use and a uh, list of answers as well and videos that are awesome. Uh, apart from that, I think read through some books, uh, talk to more and more product managers, that would I network more and that would certainly help you in your interview stages. Um, that was it. Uh, I think we're right on time. So thank you so much for tuning in, listening to this. I really appreciate all of you. If you have any questions, feel free to get back to me and have a great day.